that sure. because I think it goes beyond alcohol. The National Institute on Drug Abuse says that cannabis is easier for kids to get than alcohol, tobacco, or prescription drugs. The difference is regulated markets. So if you want to have less kids getting marijuana, you need to take away. Drug dealers are never going to ID children. They're never going to do it. As much as everybody in here wants it to happen, it's never going to happen. Anybody who believes that there's some way we're going to get kids to stop trying to get marijuana is, you've lost your minds. <laughs> this, regulated markets work. Drug dealers don't ID children, period. That's the end of discussion. That's the, the a regulated market for it is the best manner to, use it to do. Well, obviously, our debate tonight is about the legalization of medical marijuana. But Marcy, I think that the, the wider picture is here. Does this lead to uh, overall legalization, as in Colorado, for recreational use? Uh, take us from legalizing medical marijuana to you know, Jim Smith at home lighting up a joint in the privacy of his own home, uh, and, and that how does, how, do you, how does that happen because we've legalized medical marijuana? Well, you know, I've, I've been wa watching and studying this issue for a number of years. Um, and as you go into the pro-medical -mar marijuana or the pro-marijuana lobbyists, the national groups across the United States over the last number of years, they've been very transparent about what their goal is. And they've basically come out and said, and we can find, we can find and I remember reading, where they say the first thing is is that we're going to soften the attitudes of America about marijuana. And they've done, and I will say that all of you people out who love your weed, you've done a fabulous job of that. You have done a fabulous job of so Social, uh, social norming marijuana in our society to make it sound like a benign and wonderful and the magic elixir of all illnesses in the world. And so that's what they said they were going to do. They very clearly came out and said that they were going to use medical marijuana as the step in to make that a soften our attitudes toward it. They did a fabulous job at it. Now we can see the next step of it and they've even come out and said that. Once we've done that, our next step is going to legalize marijuana altogether because we believe it should be legalized in our society. And then we just had another one, another national group, where the head of that group just maybe two or three weeks ago came out and said, our next step is we're going to legalize all drugs. So we're just listening to what those individuals are telling us and where it's going to go. Now, I understand this audience may not believe that, but that's what the entire uh, thing is going for. And if you look at the, how this particular amendment's written, written and I would actually defer to my uh, Tony Coder, who's more of an expert on it than I am. Um, in fact, can I do that? Can I, Tony, you want to go? Yeah, we. No, he's not part of this, no. Yeah. I thought, I'd, like to, I'd actually like to state something about that. Well, I thought that was the understanding that we could have them speak. Yeah, go, by all means, go to the microphone. Yeah, by all means, go to the microphone, I Tony, thought if you'd was, like. The, uh, the softened view for cannabis comes from the fact that people do see it works. They do see that it doesn't have the harms. That's what's happening. Well, your research almost and my shirts are years, very almost, different. I, young I didn't interrupt you. Let me finish. I'm sorry. Um, the, the 20 years that they've had cannabis in California, when you look at the mass majority, over 80% of people in the state of California now say that they feel that it's had less harm on society than they thought it would in 1996. Softened views are not, because, not our agenda. Softened views are what happen when they see what happens around cannabis. They see that it helps people. They see that the harms are overblown. People are going to abuse anything. We, we, this is the Midwest. We have people who are overweight here because people abuse cheeseburgers. That doesn't mean we're going to criminalize McDonald's. That's, it is not. Yolanda, I'd just and like to say one idea. thing about the, um, it's very faulty logic about less kids will be using. In fact, Mm -hmm. Way more adolescents will start using weed. There's no proof the, of that excuse whatsoever. Excuse me. There's no proof of that whatsoever. There's absolutely proof. None. People, the there Monitoring is, the is. Future study looks every year at children's perception of safety of marijuana. And when the perception of safety goes up, marijuana use goes up. Absolutely that is right. absolutely and not true. If you look at true. Amsterdam, excuse me, if you look at the data, down. it's right if you there. Went, look at Portugal, it went down. My dad We're not says anecdotal. No. We're talking My real evidence. No. My data says no, you're wrong. My, My data says absolutely wrong. Right, hang on, folks. Absolutely no, hang wrong. On, folks. Way more Portugal. adolescents. Hang on, folks. We want to let Marcy's lead. side uh, uh, be heard from uh, with you, our other. Yeah, gentlemen. really quick. Do you remember what you were asked to comment on? It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> um, the, uh, I think she asked about the ballot language. Well, first off with the ballot language, who chooses uh, who's on that nine-person pa panel? You do, Mr. Pardee. So uh, absolutely it does. It absolutely says the writers of the amendment shall choose uh, six of the nine members. So you choose who's making the rules, which is absolutely deplorable. Don't say it's a, a Republican-Democrat thing. That's not true. Another thing is, another thing is, sir, please, please, um, yeah, the policy is a bad policy. Let's also talk about, um, it's not about this gentleman over here, um, who is, uh, who is, well, get out. Well, what, let's be, let's be kind, let's be kind, let's be kind. about this gentleman. It is absolutely about a 32-year-old white male with no history of, um, uh, of uh, chronic illness and a history of substance abuse. Also, how much, how much marijuana can a person have in your amendment? I'm sorry. Say how much how much marijuana could a person have on his or her person with your amendment, sir? Well, that's that's easy to answer. The, the the amendment basically says that it's sufficient to the needs of the patient. Now, let me explain why that's important, because it it's not up to us to legislate it. When you when you talk to a person who uses therapeutic cannabis in in many forms, let's take juice cannabis. A lot of people don't realize you can actually juice the plant of cannabis, and it is one of the most amazing health foods that I've ever tried. Um, and I tell you what, it does an amazing job of taking care of people as part of their digestive system. You absolutely do not get high from it, even though it has THC. It's not activated THC. It's not de decarboxylated, so it doesn't get you high. And, and it's an amazing plant. But it takes a lot of plant material for someone who's going to use juiced cannabis therapeutically. So if you were to try to dictate between a glaucoma patient and an MS patient and a cancer patient, who, cancer patient is going to need to to distill that down into Rick Simpson oil to be able to fight their cancer, that's going to take a lot of material. So why, would, why should a legislator try to establish how many plants a person should have when it should be patient-based needs? Okay, let me give her a chance for her rebuttal comment, and then we're going to take a question. He's been standing here a long time. State your name, where you're from, and... I'm Mary Jane Borden. I'm from Westerville, and I'm a co-author of the Ohio Cannabis Rights Amendment. First of all, I'd like to speak to the commission board. What we're talking about is forming the board of the initial commission of the Ohio Commission of Cannabis Control. And we wrote this purposely because what we find with legislation is that in a polarized political environment that we have now, it's very hard to kick off medical marijuana legislation. We've gone through five bills in the last 12 years that I've been doing this work, and they've gotten at, none of them have barely gotten out of a committee, and particularly uh, any place near passage. So in order to rectify that, we have have the uh, committee to present the petitioners, which we are representing hopefully anywhere from 600 to 1,000 to a million residents uh, or voters in the state of Ohio. Once this passes, it'll be probably be representing maybe uh, several million voters if it passes. So we feel that we pick a quorum of the board and we can get this industry and we can get this amendment enacted as quickly as we possibly can. In other words, we can have medicine to these children with the race in them, we feel, in probably yes, less than a year, whereas the clinical trials to which Marcy refers will take anywhere 5, 10, even as much as 12 years to complete. Okay, we're going to take a question real quick. He's been waiting patiently. We'll, we'll move that on real quick. State your name and your question for us. Um, my name's John, and the question is, um, you say that there is no studies, that there, but, but you want to throw out statistics, okay? Uh, but there's people been using it for over 40 years. Can either of you give me one person that has died from an overdose on marijuana? Uh, sir, sir, yes, like definitely. To... People have died of myocardial infarctions using weed. Excuse me? <laughs> Excuse me? Who did? You, you got, there's record of this? Absolutely. Okay. Well, I, absolutely. Okay, so, so then the question goes back to how, how, how many, you said that uh, we shouldn't pass, the legislation shouldn't have control of this. Why did the governor have control over dictating uh, the use of uh, opiate medications. Why was the law changed on what uh, doctors could prescribe? Well, I think we want to put controls, and we're not going to talk about opiates because that's not why I'm here. And I do know, <laughs> but but can because first of all. People, the problem with opiates is that opi people, is not the opiates themselves, it's people that misuse them and abuse them. That's the problem with them when people don't do it. Now, can I, do you want an answer or do you want to just shout me down? 
Do you want an answer or do you want to shout me down? Let's be respectful, people, please. Let's be respectful. <laughs> Thank you, John. Now, state your question again. What do you what